Welcome to Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Sei Shu. I speak with photography industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is Steve Saparito. He's a business coach and educator based in Melbourne, Australia. He's also the founder of Intuition to Succeed. What is Intuition to Succeed? We're going to find out. Thanks for joining us today, Steve. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Sishu. You really hit that well. You, one take. That was awesome. Indeed. <laughs> I, I've been practicing, of course. <laughs> I'm uh, so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have to preface this entire conversation by telling my audience about an amazing experience I had at your workshop in New Jersey just was it three weeks ago now, uh, some, some, something, something like that. that. Uh, time flies, but the memories are so ingrained in my head right now that I, I, I'm excited about everything you've taught me, uh, everything I've learned from my fellow participants, uh, you know, just the conversations during lunch, dinner, whatever it was, it was amazing, truly enriching. I feel like a very different person after the, after the workshop, honestly. They're your uh, allies. That's who they are. That's exactly who they are. Absolutely. And, and, and interestingly, uh, the, here's a story for those who are listening in. And we'll, I know we, we should be jumping into talk, talking about you, Steve, but it's all about me. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. You're making it about you. No problem. <laughs> I was so hesitant to go to this workshop. Number one, it was far away. Uh, Three hours is far away for me. I know you came all the way from Australia. Uh, so don't I, even talk to you about far away. So I know, right? Like, really. Right. So there's that was forty a, hours it took me to get there. I, oh, my good, oh my goodness! Uh, so one of the things that that scared me was, of course, you know, being away from my family for a week. Uh, who's going to take care of the the breakfast, the lunch, whatever it was that we have to do for the kids? Um, and then there was the expense. Uh, it wasn't inexpensive. I have to say that, but interestingly, my allies, Jason Arias <laughs> and Mike Albach, were on me pretty much like a couple of weeks before this workshop started, and I don't think they were conspiring or anything, but they talked to me on the same day about joining up and, and signing up for for your workshop in New Jersey, and I, I, I thought it was just a Go sign. Team. Yeah, I just thought it was a sign from someplace else, you know. Uh, you I know. had nothing to do with it, by the way. Yeah, I I'm sure, no I'm sure, I Steve. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with it. But True. it was it was, it was, was definitely uh, the perfect timing for me to be there, and um, I, I was excited to be there, I really was. Uh, I, I had questions, and you, you challenged me nonstop, and I loved that about you. <laughs> Uh, and it, this is the thing about being at a Steve Saperito workshop. You are going to work. <laughs> That's the yeah. beauty. You're not <laughs> well, gonna, I don't want to work. <laughs> well, you're not going to sit. You, you know, here's the thing. You, you're not going to sit there listening and taking notes and not doing anything but just take notes. Taking notes is step one. Step two is committing to do the work. And that's what Steve does. He helps you make things happen in a, in a in a beautiful, just seamless way. That's all I'm I gotta blushing. say. Yep, you should be. So, Steve, all that aside, all that aside, all that aside. Cool. I want to talk about. Talk I want to know why what what why why it's what, why it took you so long to to come. Like it can't be that much of a decision. And in hindsight, you said you know the expense, but really, was it expensive? No, no, it, it wasn't. Uh, and I think most people are, if if they are anything like me, uh, considering what is the return on that investment, right? And here's the, here's the truth. So the cost of the, of the workshop... Don't lie. What's that? Don't lie. Tell them the truth. I will. I will, I will <laughs> okay, tell you. Cool. The cost of the, expense, the, the workshop was $4,400. All right? Only $400. Only $400. Right. <laughs> Within four days of coming back from the workshop, I'd made $6,600. How good is that? It feels great. <laughs> and and here's the thing, the, the the skills and everything else that he teaches you. I mean, it's it's a whole system, folks. Whole, I mean, it's it is uh, it's, it's for a reason. It's a week long because there's so much to learn. Number one. 
so much to practice, okay? So much to really understand how to do things the right way. Uh, it comes from, uh, uh, and this is, I'm re sort of repeating everything from the workshop. I hope it's okay. That's all good. <laughs> but it's about being present for your clients. And that's huge, huge. Because at the end of the day, if you are making photographs for yourself and you're happy, that's fine. That's great. But your clients are not going to resonate with those photographs as much as you work with them. And that's a process where you get to know them, get to speak with them, get to understand who they are, who they are for each other. It's, believe me, this is huge. And it's, it's <laughs> opened my eyes in so many ways. So thank you so much, Steve. I, I'll stop gushing about your workshop as i as <laughs> i pro awesome. as i think i told you i, I said this is going to happen because i am so excited about this workshop and everything is it's done good. for me um, well it's awesome because you're not the only one i think almost everybody right. that's left the workshop has right. had the same experience um right. and i think what people fear the most about any business type workshop is a fear that if i do this and i learn how to sell then my clients will hate me for it and I'm gonna, and I'm going to feel like I've extorted money um, out of my clients. I think that's a huge fear that a lot of people have. Let's face it. Yeah. I mean, you might, is that what you were feeling as well? Is that one of the other hesitations that you feel felt like you were going to extort, have to extort money out of people? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, he, he, my, my my fears were mostly on the logistical side. I mean, just trying to work with my my wife and my kids and all that stuff. Uh, and but I get I get you though I understand what you're saying there there is that 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 fear that you know it, things aren't going to go that way and you're going to have to do something really s smarmy you know and th mm. there's no reason for it I mean the no. way the way you've taught me to approach sa sales and selling is nothing about selling we're something. not selling we're not selling exactly you're helping we're not. You're truly, yeah. truly being of service to, yeah, you're, you're truly being of service to your clients. Yeah. And um, I mean, this is the, the bigger part of it is uh, you're transforming people's lives. Love that. <laughs> I mean, you know, that that's is, my goal. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that's that is, my goal. That is huge. That is huge. Um, and I've, I've, I'll talk about a, a, a a recent client if we have the time but i want to get into intuition to succeed finally folks here it is <laughs> well uh, that, that client is the result of intuition to succeed so you it's the same thing right it is the same thing. That's the right. result <laughs> yes. talk talk to me about your background just a smidge because i think people want to know who you are uh you've been on this program before you know but yeah. i want to dive in a little bit deeper into steve saparito uh the business coach, Andres. Andres. <laughs> well, no, it, it's a family show, yeah. so keep it keep it real. One of the things that I would love to know about is, so you started you, you started out you started out in in the business, owning photo studios, knowing mm -hmm. that you can make large amounts of money, obviously, per studio. Well, Right? I didn't know that at the beginning. No, you didn't, okay. So talk to us about what, what, is, what was your transition from being broke to making, making a living having these three studios? Well, I think it was an evolution because it took, I think, 10 years okay. Okay. <laughs> for me to go from paying the bills, and really that's all I was doing, um, marginally paying the bills. Hmm. Uh, it took... 10 years for me to work out systems that actually worked that um, allowed us to have consistent income because when I got it then we went through this cycle of you know we had a cycle of where we made we, we made money and then it was really great but then everything fell and then I felt like oh this is good we've got money in the bank and then there was the next month where it just fell to pieces and then all that money that I made in the previous month, you know, was sucked up by the next month. And then, you know, we go up again and then down again and up again and down again. And then by the end, um, you know, work really, really, really hard to make the money. And then as we're falling, work really, really hard to do the marketing, really, really hard to get people in the door. Then it would take off. So now I have to work hard again. Mm. And so I was on this treadmill 
just spinning as hard as I possibly could, working ridiculous hours, um, I, even I, though I had staff. Yeah, I think I, was, I think people can relate to that quite a bit. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a trap. Like it took me, I don't know, maybe I'm dumb, but it took me like 10 years to in the business to, to figure out what was going on. Um, and once I worked at the systems, um, uh, it just started to happen. Like I set this target. I went to this workshop. I went to Anthony Robbins and um, – one of the targets that I set was something that was totally unbelievable um, in my head that we could ever achieve in the studios. Um, at the time, the studio, because I only had one at the time. Um, and when it all came together, like, we doubled that target. Hmm. So that enabled me to open a second studio. Um, and then from there, I had an overflow studio, so a third one which was only meant to be open two or three days a week, but we um, managed to fill it because the others were full. So um, I opened a third studio as an overflow. So that that studio operated probably four or five days a week. Um, the others operated seven days a week because I had two teams that would flip between um, each studio, whereas the other one I just had one team in there and, and it just gave me the ability to have extra t extra staff members that I can sort of swap around which was which was great awesome um, but then I sold because we started having kids and I thought that I would slow down but I'm not very good at that <laughs> <laughs> so I just create work for myself um, and started coaching because the lab called me and said hey why don't you um, come and give some of our other clients a clue about what you do. And I'm like, well, I have no idea. Like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> took me so long to work this out. But I, did, I just didn't realize what other people in our industry weren't doing. Or, right. like, I was apparently their biggest client. So they thought that I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and that's how I got into coaching, really. Um, I, I really love it. It's uh, I'm much more passionate about the coaching side than running the studios. Um, much more passionate about you know seeing that look on your face <laughs> when um, that light bulb goes off and um, you go just, home. Not just one. Not just one, by the well, way. Well, <laughs> multiple light bulbs. <laughs> Absolutely. Go off and it's sort of all over the room. This Absolutely. is all happening. Yep. Yep. Um, and being a part of that and taking people from wherever they are right now into a whole different place where, um, you know, I've had some of the people that I've trained ring me and say, oh, my God, thank you so much. My husband now is no longer trapped in his job and he can now leave his job and follow something that he wants to do because now I'm earning money. And in some cases, we've had a lot of husbands leave um, their full-time work and join in the photography business um, because it is so successful. So I don't know. That's my background. I love the thought of changing people's lives. I love the thought of um, helping photographers change the lives of their clients because yeah. it's not just your life that gets changed. Um, I, I think that when we give value to our clients, there's no reason for them not to want to reward us um, with buying and surrounding themselves with beautiful artwork because they connect to what we've done. And, and building that value um, is what helps change their life and helps, helps them find themselves again and find each other again as a family, as a couple, because most people are disconnected. Right. I just posted a photograph this morning on Facebook, and uh, one of the first comments from uh, a friend here in town, uh, mm -hmm. and she says, you capture some amazing things, and that was it, right? And, right. Uh, and I said, yeah, I sort of nodded to myself, and I said, okay, that's fine. But I thanked her. I said, thank you. Uh, life is hectic for all of us, right? But there are lots of those moments to stop, uh, to stop and savor. My intent is to give families in the valley a way to celebrate each other again and again. 
the artwork that families display become visual reminders and anchors to those emotions that are uniquely meaningful to them. It's deeply satisfying to know that my clients not only enjoy their relaxed portrait session experience, but are transformed by their own connected portraits on a daily basis. It's a win-win for all. Um, wow. And you were listening. I, I was listening. <laughs> and I, but here's, here's the thing, though, Steve. I, I got I to gotta be honest with uh, my audience as well. Uh, while I was listening to you, these words are my own. Uh, I, yeah. I know these echo a lot of the things you were teaching us, but yeah. they all resonated with me so much that I said, mm -hmm. holy crap, this is exactly what I need. I need a way to communicate what I absolutely love doing for my clients. And that's what you've given me. You've given me a, a voice in a way. And I think for that, I, I, um, I've got to thank you. So oh, I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. I feel uh, like I'm interviewing you now. This is uh, good. <laughs> so, I love wearing the pants. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing that struck me was you are a, a business coach uh, who teaches, yeah, a business coach who teaches about transforming uh, people's lives. And, in, in, yeah. in, and as you said, I think it transforms the photographers themselves as well. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a phenomenal effect well uh, uh, it uh, right I mean, it's <laughs> well it's it's hard powerful. for us it, it's hard for us to face our own fears and to face those things that are blocking us yeah um from achieving what we do but when we focus on our clients um i strongly believe that we only see ourselves in other people mm -hmm. and when we focus on really helping other people and helping clients and giving them a transformational experience and, and that transition, what seems to happen is we're also help, you know, healing ourselves because we only see ourselves in other people. And when we help other people um, to transition through, um, you know, finding each other again and um, making time for each other again, putting down the iPad, putting down that, that, that um, computer, turning off the phone and physically having a conversation with somebody. Right. Um, it's frightening for a lot of people because it's just not done anymore. Like the other day, um, yes, actually yesterday, it was Christy's birthday. Um, and so I rang, was it yesterday or the day before? can't remember now. I get switched between the time the time zones because we're a day ahead of you. Um, and I never know where I am. Um, as long as I don't drive on the wrong side of the road, wherever I am, yeah, then I'm go. fine. Yeah, you'll be safe. Um, yeah, and I rang and left her a message and she sent me back a message saying, oh my God, that was so awesome. You know, I had to play it again and again and again and again because right. nobody ever calls me. And we called you for your birthday too. You did, you did. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think um, making time for each other again, I think when we are in relationships as time goes by, um, we really play on the fact that we will be forgiven if we are not paying attention and there's always more time um, and we'll be able to make up for time. And really now is the right time to start paying attention and going out of our way for each other. And I honestly feel that photography gives us a reason and an excuse to reach out to people, see their, the, pos the positive side of themselves, um, allow people to delve back in and reinvent the love that they have for each other, refine all of those things that they fell in love with originally um, and just help them here. I love you every single day because we become immune to it. And it just becomes, when we say it after a while, it just becomes a habit with no meaning behind it. So really asking people the questions and getting them to talk about this sort of stuff, um, because we wanna see them for our photography, um, really helps people reconnect and, and see each other again. Um, and, and in some cases for the first time. Yeah, indeed. It's awesome. It is. It is an, uh, it's, <laughs> not, it's awesome and powerful uh, for... Yeah, yeah. I know, think we can take a photo or we can create a real um, 
a real connection between people. Um, not that there wasn't one years ago, um, but to reignite that fire and to allow them to rediscover each other over the period of time that um, it takes for you to take that initial booking, um, discover them, discover who they are, set them some tasks so then they can rediscover, rediscover who they are because a photographic experience is not just that, right? <laughs> right? right? From the first call. And the most important part of it actually happens before we physically take a, take a photograph. You know, we've all been there where um, we've done this awesome shoot, taken these amazing photos, and the couple come in, they sit down, they look at their photos, and they're like, they're like I can't believe we were arguing the whole way here. You know, that photo, you know, I, I love it, but it still reminds me of that argument we had in the car on the way here. And I don't, I don't, I don't, you're nodding, so it sounds like it's happened to you. I don't, it, it's happened to us many times. Um, so what if we flip that? And what if we have the conversations with our clients that allow them to fall in love again and rediscover each other again and, and go out of their way for each other again and write notes for each other again? Um, just be thoughtful again on the lead up to the shoot so that way, every time they look at that photograph or that piece of artwork that we're creating for them, that's what they hear. That's what they see. That's what they feel rather than, you know, dragging their husbands to a photo shoot. Right. Right. <laughs> I think I, I think you set it up so beautifully because uh, I wanted to talk about that process, um, the process of having your clients essentially rekindle or reconnect with each other before the photo shoot. I mean, a lot of people listening to this right now are watching this. Uh, will probably wonder, do I have to do that? And the answer Hell is, yeah. The answer is yeah. <laughs> That's your job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's your job. Well, it's part of you. It, it's part of what, what makes you a photographer. I mean, you can take, I think pretty pictures, but they were not going to mean much if uh, the photographs well, don't resonate with, with the people who are actually going to enjoy them. Right. So true. Absolutely. Well, I, I think, I think, you know, when you talk to commercial photographers, um, you know, they need to get the brief. They, they need to study what the client wants. They talk to talk to the art directors. They need to know who the target audience is. They need to know the message that they, that, that they want to, that company, you know, if Prada rings and says, Hey, we've got a $20,000 budget. Um, we want to, we, we, we want to hire you as a photographer. You don't just rock up and go, I got this and <laughs> rock up on the day. And, you know, you think you're shooting, I don't know, um, handbags. And then suddenly they brought out this new line for teenagers um, you have to do your research. You have to understand the product. You have to understand the market. You have to understand their message, their voice, who they're wanting to reach out to. What has this got to say to people? Um, and I think as portrait photographers and wedding photographers, who let us off the hook? Like, why is it okay for us not to do the research, not to understand the message, not to understand who that person is? Um, not to understand who the audience is. So, you know, who is this photograph really for? Um, and is it for a multitude of reasons, for a multitude of purposes? And what is the substance of this person? Um, what does he see in her? What does, how does he see their relationship? And how does she see him? How does she see the relationship? And only then can we actually pick up a camera because then we are photographing a person with a soul, with a heartbeat, with connection. If we turn up and, you know, slam on our favorite lens and, you know, set our camera settings because we rock at this and we know that we'll be able to handle anything, um, that's 
got nothing to do with the client and um, and who they are at all. Um, it doesn't have soul. It it may be an epic photo. It may be a totally epic photo because you rock it, you know, a five light setup, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and a and a and a and a kick ass um, sunset. But how many epic photos have we taken that people just go, oh, I really like the other one. I know it's a bit out of focus, but it really shows whatever it shows. Right. Because they connect with it. Yep. I'm not saying that we shouldn't take epic photos. I'm not saying that we, you know, it diminishes us as creatives. My focus is the human element and how and why people buy what they buy. People buy because they're emotionally connected. And so that emotion um, that people have in a lot of time, and in a lot of cases on the lead up to the shoot has become indifferent, has become just going through the motions right. of life. Right has become settled and we have this awesome ability and excuse to reach out to somebody and say, Hey, who is this person that you love? What is it about her that, you know, you really love? And if, if there were if there were certain things qualities about her that she doesn't see or doesn't recognize in herself, what would they be? What are the things that only you know that she doesn't see in herself? And when we begin those conversations and re spark all of that and remind people of why they fell in love again, um, it's up to us to create the best version of those people before we photograph them. That's our job. It's up to us Absolutely. to create. Yep. Um, we can, you know, say, not my job, I'm just a photographer. But for me, you know, if you were working in a, as a commercial photographer, you would have to do the research. You would have to pick the right models. You would have to pick the people with the right attitude um, that, you know, are sending that message that, You've got to add that flavor that is going to send the right message to the target market or whoever that is for the commercial photography. I don't believe we should be let off the hook. Yeah, I, I completely get it now. I mean, after, again, as I said, <laughs> uh, before before the New Jersey workshop, workshop I was uh, definitely of a different mindset. Uh, after the workshop, I have to tell you that things have gotten so clear so lucid um and so we should really talk about mind blocks and and why they're really ultimately roadblocks for our success yeah. um what do you make of these mind blocks where do they come from um i think it's history mm. i think in in our own minds we've also given up um and I love it when I watch my children, how they play and how anything's possible. And, you know, how they say, when I grow up, I'm going to be. And they say it with such passion. Um, but as a child growing up, you have so many people telling you, well, you know, especially photography, let's face it. Like my, my you know, my mum still asks me, you know, when are you going to get a real job? <laughs> 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 like, is it this photography thing going to fade out? Like, no. you know, everyone carries a camera these days. Like, why would anybody buy photos? Um, so that sort of constant messages from other people. Um, and uh, most people don't really want to see other people succeed. Um, it makes other people feel better if you're lower than them. Um, I know that this is a syndrome in Australia. I'm not sure really what happens in, in the U.S. I didn't grow up in the U.S., but we have this thing called the tall poppy syndrome. And the minute somebody, you know, raises up, you know, we got to cut them down. So um, 
I think it's history. I think it's all those voices that you've been hearing all of those years. Um, and it's just conditioning. I know that, you know, a lot of people fear answering the phone for whatever reason or picking up the phone for whatever reason. Um, but it's because of all of the history of bad experiences on the phone that, that make us fearful. So, um, you know, surrounding yourself with people that are positive about that experience. And when you have um, the goal of picking up a phone call and are excited about discovering something about someone or making a difference to somebody, um, it changes the way you pick up the phone. Absolutely. Yep. It, it doesn't become about you and your fears anymore. Right. It's totally about that other person right. and, and how you can, you can help. Um, I think the own, and and, you know, this is true because I've done, trained so many people over the years. Um, it's been 12 years now, every single time, um, whenever they were telling me about their, their clients, um, and the issues that they were having with their clients, it basically told me what their blocks were because you only see yourself in other people. So when they were telling me, you know, oh, clients won't spend money, they just don't value me, um, I don't, you know, I can't get people to spend money, and even when they do, they, you know, there's school fees, there's all this other stuff that's happening, it's your block <laughs> because you're filtering all of that information and throughout your, um, throughout your uh, time with this client, you're looking and building and building evidence, building more evidence and more evidence as to why the end result is going to be they won't spend any money. And I've tested it. I've I've physically, you know, had a client who kept telling me this because I couldn't get him to see this. And I sneakily got my wife to give him a call because his block was I built this studio, but I live in this area. Everybody wants photographs by the beach. Um, I know you want me to take some more shots in the studio, but everybody wants the beach. Nobody wants to spend money. Everybody wants a disc. And I got my wife to call him, and we are not beach people. And my instructions to her was, I need you to book a shoot in the studio. I do not want you. You know us. We don't do sand and all that stuff. Make sure it's in the studio. Um, and... Um, I want you to see if he, if he will quote us a certain amount of money. And she called him and throughout the course of the conversation, she said, okay, so we're wanting a family shoot. Do you have a studio? Oh, yes, we do. We've got this a studio. We just finished it. But you know what? There's this awesome beach not so far from the studio. <laughs> Everybody wants that. And she's like, yeah, but we're not really beach people. So I think we'd prefer – prefer to do the studio but i've got this special location nobody knows about it it's not far from the studio and it's the waves that come across and there's these amazing rocks there there was no way that she could have booked that right. studio session right and so i think we hear what we want to hear we translate what we want to translate and i think um when and I, you know, make a lot of my clients record their calls, um, and all of those things they're telling me that are happening are not happening. They're initiating it. <laughs> so, right. you know, it's it's incredible what we what we believe we hear and what is actually said. It's uh, remarkable uh, the transformation of all your students during the the workshop from the very beginning of the day one to day six. Uh, it's exciting, it, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. It is so exciting to watch everybody's mm. light bulbs just go off. Um, those mind blocks, as I call them, uh, just completely disappearing. Uh, well, so, well, some of them have to continue working yeah. on it. I think. Some are a bit stubborn. It's like a stubborn stain. Yeah, but I figured <laughs> rub it a bit harder right, for a right. long. <laughs> <laughs> but it it does happen, and I think that's the the ultimate value 
in in going to the workshop with you is that you get these mind blocks off freeing you to actually serve your clients in a in a in a such a pure way uh so uh, thank you number one (laughs) (laughs) you're welcome Uh, (laughs) thanks for coming and putting faith in us absolutely absolutely and i i do want to also mention that you know you are (laughs) for someone who is uh you know teaches such a long time you you are up at i think it's about 11 30 11 45 right now your time at night <laughs> yeah. and you're up yeah. talking about this as if it was like i'm excited by the middle stuff. of the day so <laughs> yeah i know right uh and, and <laughs> folks here, here's the thing this is the the same energy you get at the workshop <laughs> i mean it's <laughs> i mean i don't remember the first day i walked in and you you, you made me a cup of coffee which is you know, which is amazing, you know, and uh, and then you gave me uh, that was you, not amazing coffee you, on the first day. No, <laughs> you gave me. Yo- well, listen, I, at that point, I had driven three hours, remember? So I was like, I could take anything and I'd drink. Anything. <laughs> but you, you you were so you're so warm and hospitable and making sure everyone was comfortable. Uh, all of those things that, you know, uh, I think make for a wonderful uh, workshop experience where you don't just sort of show up and you just you know, you, you take notes and you go home, but you really get to know people and hang out and talk shop. And well, so it was, a, it's a, it was a wonderful experience for me. Um, you. <laughs> you've got a few coming up. I mean, you are so crazy, man. I mean, you're, you, you I'm you, slowing down next year. I'm you are. Okay. So wait, you, you came, just, you came yeah. to the, you came to Portland for mystic, right? Yes. And then you yep. came to New Jersey. You cut, you're coming to Atlanta. Right. Yes. Right. And, then, and then Toronto. And then Toronto. Uh, what's up to right. Toronto? Are you still? Are you coming back again to the to, uh, to, to the North American there's... continent? <laughs> I've just said yes to Charleston. Charleston, fantastic. <laughs> Which Charleston's just going to be a day program, and I want to trial um, something specifically for wedding photographers. So oh, awesome. It's going to be something completely different, um, but that one's full. <laughs> That one's full. Already? We sort of announced wow. it and it, fi- and it filled sort of before we even announced it, really, um, which is awesome um, because I don't take on a lot of people um, at the workshops because I, I, I need to have that um, one-on-one contact. And the social events, um, which is why we kept encouraging you to come out with us, you know, come out for dinner, come out for drinks, is the time when I get you know, that one-on-one time with most of the people to, you know, find out where they're at and clear blocks that they're not able to share in a group. Um, I mean, I had to bundle you up and throw you in the back of the car, remember, to <laughs> to work to work a little bit of magic on you. Yes, sir. Um, so that way, that way you couldn't run away from me. Um, <laughs> but... Um, you know, the workshop is about, and I find that a lot of people when I run these workshops do show, workshops do show up early, like an hour and a half, two hours early, um, because they're going through lots of stuff and they need that bit of extra time. So I do have to be up at 6 a.m. to start at 9 because I've got people turning up at 7, 7.30. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we do the workshop and the workshop starts at 9 I try to start at nine every day and then we finish at six, sometimes seven and then dinner. So, um, and I really think, you know, that time that we spend at the pool, the time that we spend um, at the restaurants and at the bars um, is where a lot, where a lot of the magic happens for people. Um, And it's that time that I get just to, you know, I suppose they're unaware that, <laughs> that, that, um, that uh, there's still some, some work happening at the time. That's and, right. That's right. Uh, and I think a lot happens in, in those social events. So, you know, you've got to be on for, for those events. Like you, you can't be – like I've been to workshops before and, you know, the speaker turns up late um, and – um, during the breaks disappears because they need their downtime, um, which I get. But um, for what I do, I need that time to mix and mingle and get to know people and, and really get to understand who you are as a person because mm. I then have to reframe 
everything that I teach for those individual people awesome. um, and know, you know, where I, which buttons to press to, to sort of um, <laughs> allow you to soak in the information because I'm not about um, just taking people's money and letting you come in and, and write a whole bunch of notes knowing that you're never going to look at them anyway. Like if I can't get you to make some shifts and some transitions and some decisions at the workshop, then you, you know, you're not going to go home and do it. You're just not. So it's got to happen at the workshop. Right. Exactly. But so, there is the support afterwards. Indeed. As well. Indeed. There's, there's a ton of support. Uh, you've got a wonderful uh, Facebook forum uh, called C4 uh, that, yeah. that, I mean, is, is lively. It's positive. Uh, there's no, you know, people whining about anything, thankfully. Uh, and, <laughs> and it's success stories. And it's okay to celebrate. Yeah. It's an it okay is, it is. To it is. And, and it's success story after success story, uh, really expressing uh, that this process, the system really works. Um, one of the things that you. Uh, it's a way of being. It's not a process. Oh, right. Yes, it's a way of being. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. One of, the, one of the things that you did uh, during the workshop, which I found truly useful, um, was to stop every now and then and ask people around the around the room to mention what their BFO was. Can you tell <laughs> us about what BFO stands for? Oh, BFO is a blinding flash of the obvious. <laughs> so it's your aha moment. Okay. So what, you know, what was what was your aha moment? Um, and I do that intentionally because um, usually the person next to you's BFO is going to be very different to yours. Mm -hmm. Um. And normally their BFO or aha moment should be yours <laughs> as well on top of. Um, and if you notice, there were at some points more towards the end that I pushed the BFOs um, a bit harder in that, oh, my God, everyone said something. You know, I don't know what to say. Um, great, we're going to go around again because it's only when we stretch ourselves um, that we get our biggest realizations. And I think the BFOs really, if all you did was come in and write down all of the BFOs, um, you would have a rich, rich source of information um, to go home with. And it probably would take you a year to implement every single one of those, <laughs> probably more. <laughs> because there's just so much uh, richness that right. the attendees are coming up with um, because of, because of the, the course. And that's exciting because when it's coming from you as a participant, as an attendee, then you own it. Um, it's not me telling you. <laughs> um, it's about what you're ready to own right now, what stood out for you. And it helps me understand what mindset you are still in the language that you're using, are you using, you know, a towards language or away from language? Are you using, you know, are you positive reframing it? Are you, you know, really whatever you're saying is what those voices in your head are saying too. So have you said it in a way that is limiting and do we then need to reframe that and teach you how, how to self-talk again? So that's important Indeed. to me. Indeed. That's important. Yeah. And I, I, I base my success in these workshops, not by the numbers um, that I get at the workshop or whether people have paid or not. Um, I base it on the success stories that I hear, um, which are the results of people walking out of there and physically doing. Excellent. And that's, you know, that's exciting. And we're getting some great, huge results. Indeed, indeed we are. <laughs> uh, I'm, and I'm just getting started myself. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a, truly in a very exciting time for for my business and uh, again thanks to you Steve I appreciate what all that you do so oh, thank you uh, last words to my audience what would you tell them about intuition to succeed it's a safe place um, for people that care about other people this is not a um, smoke and mirrors um, sales scheme, if that's what you're after, you're in the wrong place. 
Um, I'm looking for people who really do genuinely care about other people and that are, are okay with using their photography to make other people's lives um, richer and are happy for people to display um, their work, and I don't mean your work, their work is the client's work on their walls um, because they've had a huge contribution to its creation um, and, and the vision behind it and, it, and it represents who they are. So we're really looking for those people that you know are wanting to have their work seen and enjoyed every day and that every day somebody looks at that, um, they're moved, touched and inspired. I mean, the story, you know, even while we were there, Christy sent us a, um, a message from one of her clients saying, you know, it was the first day of school or second day of school, school had just started. Um, and a, a little boy was pointing up at his brother on the, on, on the staircase and it was the artwork that Christy had done. Um, telling his mum how much he'd missed his brother and it reminded him of, you know, them playing together and, you know, what he loves the most about his brother. Um, and to go, you know, brothers, you know, they fight, they argue, they, you know, mm -hmm. and then they hug each other. All, the, all of that stuff happens all at once. Um, and the joy that that um, client shared um, on Yelp and on her Facebook page because um, it really does mean something to for her to know that as brothers, they do love each other in that way. And what was taken was so authentic that it triggered that in her child. And that's important to surround ourselves with um, who we are and you know what we love about each other. And every time we look at a piece of artwork, that it says something to us. Indeed. Indeed. Steve, thank you so much for making the Welcome. time. I know it's, it's <laughs> thank you. late at night for you. Uh, I'm just getting started on my day, but uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I look forward to attending your workshops in the future. I think, uh, oh. you know. Come to Toronto. <laughs> come to Toronto. Yes, of course. <laughs> Give me a couple of give me a couple of months. I, I, I'm happy to come to Toronto. Uh, uh, well, that'll 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 be um, maybe Charleston by then. Charleston, okay. <laughs> well, that's booked already. I think we should run one in Mexico. I reckon we should do one in Mexico. That'll be fun. Where it's nice and warm on the beaches. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Sounds awesome. <laughs> yes. But thanks so much, Steve. I appreciate it. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.